I've only been back to Australia a couple of times. But as soon as I got off the plane, I felt like an alien yeah. in my own country. Because I'd become, there, there was a magic in Pakistan. There was something so uh, powerful here and so beautiful under the greyness, under the, the dust, under the, um, the chaos of Karachi, yeah. under the, the poverty, the pollution, yet something was shining through. So I got off, off the plane in, in Sydney and I thought, Ya Allah, what have I come back here for? And I felt completely out of place. But you feel completely at home here? I feel a lot more at home here now than I did in Australia, than I, than I do when I go back to Australia. But do you think people here totally accept you now? I think they do. Uh, I'm a Muslim. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's would help. A, that helps so much. So, so do you think that if, I'm, if I were to live here permanently, converting to Islam is something that one has to do to become fully accepted? I think you don't even think like that. I think becoming a Muslim is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a matter of becoming a Muslim to right, fit in. Right. It's becoming a Muslim because you have to become a Muslim. But do you think I, I can live here as a non-Muslim and fit in and be accepted? Look, you're frightened. I know you're frightened. I was very frightened and I wanted to run back to Australia. Oh, you. <laughs> but when I got here, Pakistan, the way I, I described it in, in some writing I was doing, I said Pakistan ripped me apart. It ripped me apart because I felt love coming to me mm -hmm. from so many people. Yeah. And I just was reciprocating with love. And it was everywhere I went. I, didn't, I mean, I would be crying because I'd be encountering humanity. Humanity in exalted humanity, bereft humanity poverty stricken, every conceivable thing, every conceivable type of person. And I had this amazing love, which I'd never had in Australia. I'd never sort of really experienced that. It, I mean, I wanted to run away, but I didn't run away. I said, okay, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, God has put me here for a reason. There's something here for me. And I've got to just hang in and inshallah it will reveal itself, you know? Where all of the work's done. And these are some of my books. Okay. Uh, that's my first book. And the sky is not the limit. And I present you a little <laughs> copy. Thank of you my very first much. Book. Now this is my, my, my third book, but it's too heavy for you at the moment. It's a very heavy book on Sufism. When you've, when you've absorbed this, and you've got all your spiritual nourishment from that, then I might... I'll move it. on to You the... move on to this, okay? Inshallah. With Sufism, the knowledge that you're looking for is not going to be found in the books. It's going to be found in your heart. But I, I'm, sorry, I, I mean, I'm not doubting you at all. I mean, and you seem very content, and, you, and you know, what you're talking about is, is clearly coming right from the heart. I hope it goes to your heart, inshallah. Oh, inshallah. But I mean. <laughs> What about back home? I mean, do people not think you're slightly Yeah, they think, you, they think you're bananas. They think you're crazy. And, and, you know, I don't want to lose my friends and family back home. I and, don't think that's necessary to lose. Like, I didn't see my mother for 17 years after I embraced Islam. She is very, very, very unhappy. And maybe I didn't, maybe a lot of the fault was me because I didn't go gently enough with mm. her. I should have been more gentle. In the early days I was very strict. Right. You know, scarf and tie, no hair and anything. Mm. So that would have frightened her, you know? And if I'd been a little bit easier maybe. So don't worry, do it through the grace of Allah. Everything will but be alright. But she looked so content. Ah, shukran, alhamdulillah. 